in this video we will discuss about mitral regurgitation it is basically a condition in which the mitral valve it does not close tightly due to which the blood flows backward into left atrium each time when left ventricle contracts now what is the etiology why does mitral regurgitation happen to understand this you will have to uh, make into an account that mitral regurgitation is of two types one is acute and second is chronic so in acute we have basically four factors the first one being rheumatic fever second one being acute myocardial infarction then endocarditis and we have surgery for chronic you will have to remember we have many factors coming on to the first from c is congenital then we can have rheumatic heart disease rheumatic arthritis due to marfan syndrome or due to uh, ankylosing spondylitis now uh, we'll understand how the this process this condition happens basically we'll discuss about the pathophysiology and how it affects and why it is considered as a defect basically now for this i'll uh, make you understand in two headings the first one we'll take upon is acute mitral regurgitation now here remember that we will see the effects on left atrium and left ventricle let's write left ventricle here and left atrium here now in left ventricle what we'll see is since it is pumping the blood it is contracting okay so there is a pressure overload or a volume overload then what we see is there is an increase in the total stroke volume why is there an increase because basically it is forward stroke volume plus regurgitant volume then we see is there is a decrease in the forward stroke volume because blood is not being pumped in the forward direction now in left atrium what we see is there is a volume plus pressure overload due to this there is an increase in the left atrium pressure this is increased now what happens is this leads to an inhibitory or a prevent or a preventary factor to the proper drainage of blood from lungs to pulmonary vein due to which what we see is acute pulmonary edema this is seen in acute mitral regurgitation now discussing the chronic mitral regurgitation in chronic mitral regurgitation again we'll consider left ventricle and left atrium what happens in left ventricle is there occurs an eccentric form of left ventricular hypertrophy then there also occurs an increase in the left ventricular stroke volume basically it is uh, allowing normal forward stroke volume and there is an increase in the end diastolic volume in left atrium what happens is basically you will see that there will be a decrease in the filling pressure so as told before volume overload will occur due to which there will be a dilatation of left atrium due to which there will be a decrease in the filling pressure which will lead to increase in the left atrium pressure which will lead to a condition pulmonary congestion will be increased now if pulmonary congestion is increased what we see is pulmonary hypertension we see dyspnea and we can also observe some congestive heart failure like symptoms okay now since we've discussed the pathophysiology now we'll discuss about the symptoms in symptoms also we'll uh, divide them into two categories acute and chronic in acute as i mentioned we will see pulmonary edema 
why is pulmonary edema happening because we read it here that there is a volume and pressure overload which inhibits the proper drainage of blood from the lungs to the pulmonary veins and due to which pulmonary edema occurs now coming on to the chronic one here we see a wide range of symptoms first is exertional dyspnea then we can also observe nocturnal dyspnea we can see palpitations then we can see dyspnea we have done pulmonary hypertension then we can see uh, fatigue hypertension ke sath hi fatigue um, we can see tiredness then as i said we can also see congestive heart failure symptoms so we might mention the uh, arrhythmia endocarditis <coughs> then puffiness of face leg swelling and uh, ascites now coming on to the physical signs in physical signs we can see wide or normal pulse pressure we can see normal or good pulse cyanosis and increased jugular venous pressure this was also increased in mitral stenosis as well as in mitral uh, regurgitation now if you are asked um, just a basic thing uh, mitral regurgitation occurs mainly uh, mainly in men and mitral stenosis mainly occurs in females so this covers the signs and symptoms we'll discuss the investigations of mitral regurgitation so first of all what we'll see is ecg in ecg we will see left atrium hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy and atrial fibrillation then in chest x ray what we might observe is cardiomegaly pulmonary congestion edema then in echocardiography what we will see is there will be chamber enlargement and left ventricular function then we can also do color doppler echocardiography and we can do cardiac catheterization now in examination as i mentioned earlier four parts okay so the first one you have to write it in this order only inspection palpation percussion and auscultation now what really happens in inspection is we see that the apex beat which we were considering while in mitral stenosis it was in the second intercostal space and now it will be displaced to the out of the fifth intercostal space so basically it will be outside it will be beyond the fifth intercostal space so it will be out of the mid clavicular line and it is diffuse okay now uh, as before pulmonary artery pulsation it will be observed in second intercostal space now in palpation what we'll see is there will be well the the apex beat is displaced down apex beat there will be a systolic thrill that we can see at apex which is palpable usme we had a diastolic thrill if i'm not wrong um yeah we had an apical diastolic thrill in mitral stenosis over here we will have a apical systolic thrill okay now coming on to the percussion percussion may the dullness does not extend beyond apex beat now in auscultation is where we will see most of the differences coming in so first of all the first heart sound it will be soft and muffled then pan systolic murmur will be extended or will be uh, at the apex and it will radiate to the left axilla third heart sound will also be present there we didn't have any third heart sound so here there also will be fine crepitations on lung as we did in 
previous the p2 will be low oh sorry loud and it might be split now we have covered the examination part now coming on to the management management as earlier two parts mein first is the medical then is the surgical in medical we have first of all salt restricted diet then we have digoxin which we give 0.1 to 5 to 0.25 mg daily for 5 weeks sorry for 5 days in a week then we also have some diuretics which we give then we also seem to uh, give some anti coagulants if atrial fibrillation is present one thing i forgot which is vasodilators in vasodilators we will give oral captopril enalapril this 25 to 50 mg daily this is 2.5 mg daily we also have to provide a long term antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent bacterial endocarditis so in this we usually give benzathione penicillin which is 12 lakhs per unit after every 3 to 4 weeks then into the surgical treatment if it is more severe okay so what we can uh, basically think about is mitral valve replacement in this also as i mentioned earlier we have a mechanical and a biological valves so this is basically in young patients and this is in older patients thank you